Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd make a quick little video updating you as to the progress that I've made on my mechanical prosthetic hand this week, as well as a pretty cool project that I've started working on for a local amputee. And finally, I'd like to show you a pretty neat piece of kit that UPS dropped off at my shop last week. So let's get started. So most of my energy this last week has been focused on the designing of the forearm assembly. In previous iterations, this assembly has been pretty simple. Functionality of this hand, this version is going to need to be a little bit more complex. On this hand, I'm isolating the driving motion that splays the fingers from the motion that changes the grip pattern. On the 158 hand, I use the lateral motion of the wrist to drive the finger splay, as well as the scotch yoke that changes the grip patterns. By having the end points at different positions and a decent amount of over travel between the functions. On paper, it seemed like a pretty solid idea. That's a perfect example of where the world of CAD can differ wildly from the physical world. What looked great on a laptop has been mildly infuriating out in the wild. The issue that I've been dealing with on the 158 hand is if I happen to over travel the splay by grabbing a hold of something, I'll end up inadvertently changing grip patterns. For the build of the 159 hand, I'm deciding to separate the input motions. The splay will continue to be driven by the lateral motion of the wrist, but now the grip pattern selection will be articulated by the rotation of the wrist. Hopefully, by separating these inputs, the device will be intuitive and reliable to operate out in the wild. This brings me to the second topic of this video. So about a year and a half ago, I met a local amputee named Mark and his wife Cindy. And from what I know of them, they're a great couple. Unfortunately, for Mark, his life got turned upside down for a minute or two, a couple of years back. His situation required the amputation of his hands and his feet. Now, it's my experience that attitude has a great deal to do with how well you're going to thrive in this kind of situation. And his attitude is absolutely inspiring. His ability to embrace his suck and continue to have a positive outlook on life is just amazing. Now, back when we first met, Mark mentioned that he had a couple activities that he wanted to be able to do again. First off, he wanted to be able to play music. And second, he wanted to get a setup together so that he could play golf again. Since he was still figuring out how to get around on his prosthetic legs, we decided to tackle the gadget for music first. After a bit of back and forth, I designed a slide that attached to the quick release of the socket of his prosthetic arm. And with some practice, he's gotten pretty good with it. So now that he's had a bit more time to get pretty good at getting around on his prosthetic legs, he's decided that he wants to try out golf. This is where I'd like to take a moment and thank all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys are awesome. And your contributions are going to be funding a good portion of this build. So thank you very much for supporting things like this. So what I'm working on is a pair of gadgets that will attach the sockets of his prosthetic arms to his golf club. I'm designing a bracket that has a V-lock quick release, a mount with radial serrations to lock the angle, and a hinge to act as his wrist. It should be a pretty cool setup, and hopefully he's able to maintain his balance throughout the stroke of the club. I'll be printing the prototypes on the Ceremone V1 that Creality sent to me to make sure it's functional before committing the device to aluminum. I'll be putting a video together on it as I really get going on this project. Finally, I'd like to show you a pretty cool product that showed up to the shop the other day. This is the iBoss Post Processor. It's like a dishwasher for your resin printed parts. After you finish printing whatever on your resin printer, you remove the parts from the build platform and place them in the basket of the parts washer. Next, select the height of the IPA, the wash, the dry, and the cure time that you want for the post processing, and press start. It's pretty uneventful to watch. There's some whirring, the IPA gets transferred into and out from the washer a couple times, and pretty soon it stops. It definitely beats swirling your parts around in a mason jar of IPA, and then sticking them in the sun for post cure. If you think this device would fit with your flow, be sure to check them out on Kickstarter. There's a link in the description. Now, of course, there's no guarantee with Kickstarter, and there's always the risk that you might never actually get what they're building. So, be sure to back it at your own risk. That being said, so far, it's a pretty cool tool. Check it out and decide for yourself if it's something for you. As far as the printers that Creality sent me, 
I'm still getting good results with the Sir Moon V1, even after talking about it in my last video. And I finally found the right settings to get good parts out of the Haylot 1. I was running into issues where the print would detach from the build platform mid-print. I'm using the Creality Standard Resin Plus in gray, and I finally found the right settings to get good parts out of the Haylot 1. I ended up increasing the initial layer exposure time from 40 seconds to 48, and the layer exposure time from 3 seconds to 3.4. If you have one of these printers and have had this as a problem, try these settings out. Hopefully they work for you the same as they did for me. Well, that's all I have for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share my videos to help me out with the algorithm. And if you have time, please leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Here's your change. No.